Hello again, it's Cliff here from Down Under. Another exciting chapter on the uh, collets and chucks. Um, I'm going to go in this video into ER collets versus 5C collets. Very controversial. <laughs> Alright, cheers. We're just looking at this question of should we use 5C collets, collets or should we use ER collets? The more I think about this, the more un unhappy I am. I just have lack of knowledge about which is the best way to go. If you look on the forums, they argue endlessly about it. But but it's not based on science. It's just people's bias. And, um, I've got a full set of, a good set of, of 5C collets and a good set of ER32 collets. Which one should I use? Some people are arguing that this is what happens with a 5C collet. It only grips on the very tip. And, tip, and, and it can't comply with diameters other than the size of collet that they say they are. A, a half-inch collet for a half-inch precision diameter. If you put in a smaller diameter, it'll only grip very poorly. And then I started thinking, well, how do we know that's what happens? I mean, maybe what happens when you tighten up the 5C collet is that that happens initially, but when you tighten it up tight enough, it buckles this, this is a sectional view of the collet. It buckles in the middle here because it's thinned out here. There's quite a big hole inside the collet on all the different sizes. Maybe that's to allow it to buckle. So then it applies itself parallel to a smaller diameter and actually holds really well because this section is, is each leaf section of the collet spring is buckling here, exaggerated like that, until you get really good conformation and, and locking and maybe the 5c system is good how can i test it to see whether it does or not so first of all i thought i'll get some bearing blue and apply it down inside the collet down in the depth of the bore and clamp it up on a deliberately smaller diameter and see whether it grips over a narrow zone or not but I couldn't really get a very effective transfer. You know, often bearing blue is not that great. Well, finally, I had a good idea. I turned up a piece of half inch down a ten thou, so that's not as far down as it could be. Um, so it was uh, instead of five hundred, it was four ninety, and then tightened it up pretty tight, and then just screwed it around didn't seem to be gripping very well at all and then when I pulled it out I could see it was only really rubbing tight on the very front zone and that's pretty good evidence to me that a 5C collet only grips at the front unless it is an on spec size a precision fit in the collet it, it doesn't close down well on sizes of less than its specified size Okay, so then I put the same piece into a ER32 collet, uh, the 13mm to 12mm collet, closed it down on that and tried it out for gripping and torque and yeah, massively more well gripped. Um, huge clamping force compared with the 5C and um, you can see the when I skidded it under load, you can see it's gripping over quite a long length at each end so a very much more powerful and even grip on a non-standard size with an ER collet system. For the other side I thought I'd try out my ER32 collet chuck um, that's just that $50 chuck I got off eBay it's just got little light M6 cap screws I'd be happier if they were M8 or M10 but I wanted to get it up and running quickly and they were the size holes but you know they'll produce a massive clamping force on a big diameter face and there should be no problem there um, a big diameter face of clamping is like a vise on a milling machine and it provides huge friction grip um, but you know that looks like quite a big ask for a, a long hangout in alloy steel machining a part and parting it off. Let's see how it goes.
Oh, I'm most impressed. That is one rigid little chuck system. And I really like the potential of this um, ER32 collet system, the, the cheap $50 uh, collet chuck that I mounted on that D14 backplate. I just clocked it up on the taper and I've got the worst case scenario a uh, it's the collet's closing right down from a 20 millimeter collet down to a three quarter inch uh, dowel that's 1905 and that's right on the maximum um, collapse of one millimeter and um, it's really concentric even with that much compression um, it's running within a hundredth of a millimeter that's uh, within half a hundredth millimeter off center maximum so that's very good quite pleased with that particular uh, collet anyway um, it looks like the collet the, the fifty dollar collet chuck from eBay is uh, gonna gonna be good enough and that will be really handy for parts uh, under 20 millimeters diameter or maybe it goes up to 22 millimeters so some of you might be thinking, well, why use a collet system at all when you've got small chucks that can be dialed in concentric? You can tighten up on your part. It doesn't pull back and mess up your uh, lengthwise stop referencing. Um, surely a chuck is just a better way to go. But of course, a chuck is better in some situations and a collet is better in other situations. If you're using reverse jaws and gripping a, a disc-shaped part, a chuck is obviously going to be better in most situations. Um, a chuck won't pull back lengthways against a stop, but it holds the part in a secure Z uh, position. Um, and a chuck will grip very securely for heavy machining of steel and so on. But there are situations where a collet's better. Um, if you've got a, a floating adjustable chuck, a chuck is also as accurate as a collet. Um, but there's still situations where a collet is better. A collet grips over a bigger circumference of the part and it is better for holding fragile parts or parts that you're concerned about indenting with the chuck jaws uh, and parts that you don't want to distort because of the narrow zone of clamping on a chuck jaw. So uh, there are a few situations where collets are more useful and so they're worth having. Hey, see, that's a good point. You know, if you're considering buying a CNC lathe, uh, don't automatically buy an automatic collet closer or, or bar feeder or bar puller setup um, just because that's available uh, for sale and um, it has the facility to do that. You'll be paying a lot of money for equipment that you will only be using if you're producing large quantities uh, that you'll only be using and justifying the cost of unless you're producing large quantities of short parts um, that, that are ideally suited for this type of equipment. If you are not likely to be doing that type of work in the foreseeable future, then you can save yourself a lot of money by not buying um, an air-operated collet closer or bar puller system, bar feeder system. When I was ordering my Slant Pro, I was trying to decide should I get a lever type collet closer or the new type of compact pneumatic collet closer. And I don't really know long term what type of use the 5C system is going to be used for. So I thought I'll just make up a manual collet closer initially. Um, and then uh, after I've used it for a while, I'll, I'll be better able to choose the type of uh, collet closer and they're easy enough to make you can just buy a bit of uh, thick, thick wall uh, tubing mild steel tubing and just turn the outside you can push one end to suit your lathe uh, thread the other end to suit 5c you can put an insertable uh, thread stop bush in there with a little grub screw that locks it in place on both the uh, sliding stop shaft and inside the uh, bore of the tube you can buy a cheap uh, seamed thick wall tube for just a couple of dollars and bore in from each end to machine the seam off, turn the outside diameter, thread one end, pin the uh, head of the, uh, of the closer on the other end. That's just got three little grub screws holding it on with spigots as per rapid turn. So that's a cheap option. 
uh, if you just need something to get you going you don't want to buy all the expensive equipment right from the start um, that was what I did anyway thanks for watching guys catch you later Thank <laughs> you.